and we're in. Hello, junkies. I'm from a different franchise. Oh, no! Don't, don't, don't say how high they won't let us promote this video. Then. Well, Facebook will. Well, you just said it. You just said it, though. <laughs> Good job, Evan. You Good just said job. it. Good job. You just said it. All right. <laughs> All right. MJ, move in. Oh. Oh. As you can tell, junkies, um, Evan bought a tie fighter. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right, I gotta, we got to point out right away, I didn't take a sticker off of it or anything. It was at... It was just at $25, and I got half off of it. So, well, well, which is I, interesting. Which means I, I had to buy it. Which is interesting, because I have seen them for 40% off, and you got it for 50% off. Yep. So, no I, was at, I, was at the, I was at the Toys R Us yeah, in Denver. Yeah, Toys R Us is going to close before you. Yeah. Close. Yeah. So, uh, before we get into this, very quick and easy. Um, some places still haven't put the sticker out. This, these were bought before the stickers seemed to start yep, happening. I got mine on Friday. Yeah, Friday, and then Bobby got your Saturday? Saturday, yeah. Saturday, yeah, I, so Saturday I, afternoon. I sent my picture, and I was like, look what I got. And then the next day, I was like, look what I got. Yeah, so... And uh, you know what? I think, um, I think, I'm not sure. I, one's for a friend, and I don't think the other one's for me, because I have one already. So I'm trying to figure like out... You're not painting it now? I don't know. I'm going to let that let the wife run... Run that by her, see if she wants to paint another one. Because when you see it in person, it's and, big. and you know she's going to see me, and I'm standing behind it right now. It and we were talking about this. What do you do with this? Like, yeah, we can make hang it. it. Table. I'm telling you, it's a table. We can hang it, make it into a display, we can make it into a table. But if you have one already, do you really need two toys this big? It's like having two GI Joe <laughs> aircraft carriers. Sounds great. Until you, know, you, you can both never, have it in you the can road. never have enough US flags. Well, you're selling them. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, Carl Billing says we need name tags. Hi, I'm Evan. I'm Jay. Bob. Bob. I thought about putting that up, that we could throw that up because we're always in the same. Yeah, we, yeah, should, we, we should get a card. We should get a card for the yeah, card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so just real quick. We paid twelve fifty. Yep. Uh, because that's what it was still priced at when we bought it. Yep. Uh, we do not condone nor bash anyone. Uh, if they decide to get sticker happy, but we didn't do that yep. um, because it is uh, still yeah, it's so, theft. Theft by deception. Yeah. Um, though I, I feel it's something that the imperial forces would do. Well, I, I feel they're pulling stickers. I think part of the problem is. I think we're losing the idea of what is Toys R Us and what is the liquidation company. Yeah, exactly. Which is the confusion that I had earlier when we were talking about yeah. this whole yes. thing. So that's what I think we're really kind of here to talk about today, which is Toys R Us, as we all know it, is gone. You are still going into Toys R Us locations, right. but there is no more Toys R Us management in place. Some of the managers did stay on uh, on the East Coast. Most of them left. Um, and the people that are now wearing the shirts work for the liquidation company. Some of them don't even wear the shirts anymore. Yeah. I was there. I was at one on shirts. The only reason why I knew they were Toys R Us employees is because they were putting stuff away. Like they were taking stuff off of carts and putting it up on the shelf. Yeah. Shabral, I think we should, you want to take this out? <laughs> Hey, uh, Josh Wagner was saying he can't, he can barely hear us talk. I fixed the thing there. I'm just trying to make sure, talk real quick. Hello? Okay, we're good. All right, we're back. <laughs> all uh, right. It wasn't plugged in all the way. The mic's so, oh, well, wow. it's so it. much for our great speech. Yeah. <laughs> no, they said they could, you could barely hear us. Right. Could, yes. So, the liquidation companies are now in control of everything that happens at the Toys R Us locations. Which means, in some cases, though the warehouses are empty at least on the east coast from what we've been told that doesn't mean that there's still not stock that will be put out on the shelves because most toys r us's have a large warehouse in the back it just means that they've cleared the warehouses and got all of the stock into the stores so you should be if you can and you have the time and you're a junkie like us i know i check at least one or two toys r us's a week yeah, if I can, because they're always putting out new items, and you get to see stuff that you never see or haven't seen for a while, like 
$24 TIE Fighters and old NECA releases from two right. or three years ago. Um, so I would thought it was funny. I saw uh, a whole bunch of, um, what was it, Funko, when they made all the, was it Funko and maybe Dark Horse together? They did the Game of Thrones figures, and like Jamie Lannisters are everywhere right now. Yeah. For some reason, that one figure is the one you can does find. Does he have the gold hand? Uh, he's in the gold armor, so maybe he does. The one that I that that, I, that made me laugh the most was the exploding Peter, I think, or what? It was the guy from Heroes. Oh yeah, the um, yeah. Well, there was uh, was there an invisible Peter? Yeah, something like yeah. It. it was I a saw, Toys R Us exclusive. I yeah. saw a million uh, Olaf's from Frozen. His that, Frozen Adventure. That's that. one that I the 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 and people have been posting in the group this uh, a lot are like hundreds of one single figure yeah mm -hmm. so i don't know if those went back as overstock because they didn't sell it seems to and then sense. they were put together as one skew and it was like shit. we saw we saw 150 uh jean grays from yeah. the juggernaut wave and there was a i believe it was a junkie in indiana who had over 100 Icemans. yeah he had posted a picture of that there so, were there were all of those. Well, the Wolverine twelve inches. That one's yes. a little different. And there's some Deadpool twelve release. inches in the gray that have popped up yeah, in a lot yeah. of places. But I, I think that's what we're we're at that point now where I don't think we're really getting the Toys R Us warehouse stuff anymore. No, that's we're done. We're getting stuff from other companies, big lots. Hasbro maybe just had a whole bunch of stuff at a warehouse and they sold it to. Well, that, that's it. I don't believe from, from what we understand that there's one single liquidation company that's handling it. I think there's a bunch of smaller liquidation companies that are handling different locations mm -hmm. and they're starting to bring in new product. And, and you have to understand that if you're a liquidator and you're buying toys and other goods, and you have a location that sells toys and you have people that are going there to buy mm -hmm. toys, wouldn't you put your other stock at that location? It makes right. sense. But what it means is, is for the junkies who tried to get the 1250 black tie fighter, that they're catching on to this. And I think part of the other problem is, and we're not only in our own action figure group of 38,000. Yeah. 38,000, 38, yeah. But we're in a lot of other small toy groups where we look at things and we, you know, we have our own little likes and things. And I'm in a Black Series group of, of uh, 10,000 people and all weekend long, everybody was reporting TIE Fighters, TIE Fighters, TIE Fighters, 1250, 1250, 1250, you know, and showing receipts. And I think part of the anger is a lot of us that wanted this toy when it came out is that one, it was very expensive. 150 bucks. 150 yep. bucks. Then we had that that weird week last year where all of a sudden on Kmart, they were like $2.12. And then they would price match. Yes. And then people were walking in showing Kmart.com to different stores price match. So I think what our anger is, is that we really wanted this toy. We were looking it for it at a reasonable price, $50, $60, something of that nature. And then all of a sudden they were gone. So that meant there were no more that they, okay, they only made so many. And now we turn around and there's, and palaces. literally let's show the one picture. I found four on Sunday and they all had the sticker, which is that sticker right there. They all had that sticker. And, on. And, and that's what it comes down to now, which is you've got these liquidators who are putting stock in the stores. They've got to make their money because they're right. employing the employees. Um, and listen, if you wanted it at, at 75 or 12 mm -hmm. bucks, you're happy to see it because you're not going to see it anywhere else, you know, other than on eBay at this point. And I think another, another anger issue for me is that where were all those toys? Well, that's one of the things. Where we, did we, all we of this about. go and where did it sit? And like, again, um, a lot of these mm -hmm. things, Evan, uh, you know, uh, and I were both talking that we saw a lot of the Force Awakens toys, brand new, never been out of the box, uh, the box they were shipped in. The case. The case, with no dust, no nothing on them, and they want full price minus the 50% well, off. Well, so I want, I want to get back to that, yeah. but let's just, let's, let's do a couple comments. So we got good evening from the UK. Hey! So, hey, what's going on? Uh, do you know what the discounts are currently Tuesdays or the days that they in 
increase the discounts. Mine it was, seems to be all over the place. Yeah, yeah. mine was at 40, 60. Extra figures were at 50, 50%. And yeah. yours was a little bit less. So what it yep. seems to be that at the highest is 60% now. Yep. Action figures are 50. Those are at locations that are mm -hmm. going to close before the other ones. Yeah, so there so isn't there isn't a real tr you know tried and true method. No. Other than if you have a higher discount, yep. you know that store will be closed first. And if you have any outlet stores near near you, I'm pretty sure they're gone. I hit two. Yeah, I believe empty. And which the outlet stores were always a ripoff. We could talk about yeah, that as yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> so today was 50%. Uh, Carl said liquidation might be regional. Uh, 30 to 50, 50% 50 is maximum. Somebody bought the Black Series at $75, which, I, listen, we, you know, obviously we had it out here. It's, I wouldn't pay that because I'm not a Star Wars collector, but I think that's a 75. I would never pay $150 for that. You'd be hard pressed it's, to get me at 150. And I got to assume that if I paid 150, I'd be not happy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, that's, um, and then we've, Evan brought it in and we have it set up here. And I was looking at it and it seemed, like the box is really heavy, yeah. but when you hold it, you're like, this seems kind of flimsy, and that's yeah, it it's sort of the wobbles. plastic is a little, yeah, you know, thin. Yeah. Like this isn't something you're going to give like an eight year old kid to run around with. Yeah, this is something you're either you're obviously going to put on display. Um, if you put two figures in it, suddenly those two figures are out of your view. Yeah, so you're not going to yeah, see them. It's anyway. real dark in there, and you just kind of have to wonder. What am I going to do with this thing? Yeah. Like, it's really, really big. So, uh, Carl says, I haven't seen one in Portland Metro since December. Michael Dunn says, don't steal. Karma is real. I like how that rhymed. Uh, very nice. I, uh, Josh said, I just picked up a 1977 C-3PO for 6 bucks and now at a now and then store. Nice. Uh, someone said, I, uh, Frank said, I saw shipping boxes at True with Walmart on it. Carl Billing said 60 for lots, but... Action figures, 50% in Portland. So, yeah, that's about what yeah. we've been seeing. Yeah. And so that's the thing. The liquidation companies that the re – it seems like they're regional. I don't know that it's mm -hmm. location by location. But they buy overstock. So if you are a liquidation company and you have overstock toys, you're going to want to put them in a place where people are going to buy them. So you're going to see – somebody said that they saw a, a Kmart. Kmart only stickers at their Toys R Us. Yep. You're going to see Walmart. You're going to start to see that. And guys, this is like the last days of the Alamo here. You know what I mean? There's 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 not much left. They're they're milking it for everything that they can. Toys R Us is gone and moved on. The liquidation companies are in charge of everything that happens. And what we were saying earlier is is why didn't Toys R Us do a better job? If Toys R Us took the time that the liquidation company is in the thinking about getting the right items to the right places, maybe they, maybe if they didn't sit on the Black Series TIE Fighters until the end. Maybe if they put yeah. out the Hydra 2-packs that people wanted or got the exclusives to the store. We have a junkie out on the West Coast, Josh, who did our uh, Avengers video, who says, I can't get half the stuff that you guys get right. on the East Coast. I wish I could. And I posted a picture of me in, a, in one of the little kid Hasbro sand speeders the other day. And I said, I'm still waiting for it to drop to about 50 bucks. And a woman commented and said, where are you? And I said, I'm in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia area. And she goes, I'm in LA. that are nowhere to be found. And we go to a store and there's at least 30 in oh, each yeah. store. Yep. Well, I asked these guys this earlier. And you, you know, if, if you want to chime in in the comments, how cheap does that land speeder have to be for you to buy like two or three of them? 30 bucks, I buy three of them. 50, I buy two. I've got $100 just stashed away so that I could, because it's not going to fit me. I'm aware of that. But I'm thinking we cut the bottom out and we just run into each other. That, that might just happen. Land I, speeder I, bumper cars. I was thinking any junkie that's good with uh, toys and modifications, I think it would make a great gift for someone who's in a wheelchair for a child to be Luke or Obi-Wan or something like that for Halloween or for cosplay, that would be another great What Can you fit the, you know those like big, big fig Star Wars yeah. figures? Oh, you yeah. think, can, do they have a knee? Yeah. Do they have a knee? Because if they bend at the knee, I would just, I'd Obi-Wan. I think they, they bend, it, they bend like, like C3PO the yeah. and Luke. Put it in there. Yeah. And you, you know, a that's giant, a pretty, yeah, giant yeah. display. So I think there's a lot of things that we could end up doing with those sand speeders. And uh, I'm looking forward to the images once those oh, things yeah. hit 
under 50, uh, hit 50 bucks. If they hit 50, they'll start disappearing. Well, we, we talked about this the other day. We were at the True in Cherry Hill, and they had one out of the box. And I'm yeah. tired of waiting, so I figured, let me see if, you know, I can, you know, talk to the guy. So I asked the liquidation manager, and he said, I can't sell it to you at less than I would than what's in the box. And he said, just wait. He literally looked at me and went, we've got more of these in the back. He goes, they're going to go less. Just wait. You'll get it. Now, of course, I didn't want to wait. Right. You know, but I'm going to wait, and I'm definitely buying one. But you, there's, there's so many questions, and that it just we're never going to get answers to. Who thought that more than five of those at each location across the country but, was a good idea? And I'm telling you, that's, that was the problem with Toys R Us. Most of the, they had buying that they it didn't matter what it was so they had agreed upon buying from these big companies and it was every quarter we're going to buy two hundred thousand dollars worth of your product so if you're a purchasing manager you're looking and you're going i got it here's the amount of money i got to hit there's nothing really great here's this land speeder and i mean it's insane i you know i mean it's literally well it, it <laughs> I also think if you would have taken all that plastic yeah, I don't even know what to say anymore. and you would have yeah, made Ray done. action figures back in 2015, oh, yeah. whenever, whenever that was, that or 20, when was it, 2015 that movie came out? Yes. Yeah, 2015, December, and we all right, wanted them. Or give me a bonus with it. Like, give me a little land speeder, speeder with, a, with a couple guys. Like, yeah. like. well, I want to go to the comments, yeah, but this is a lot. You, were, you were there and you saw the Nerf quad thing. Yeah. It had this really cool gun, so I said... Bob doesn't have the gun attached to yeah. it because at that point I'm going to buy that for my son yeah. and he goes no it's not attached and the gun doesn't even come with it yep. then don't put it on the box yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah. a that's, that's a toy team unfortunately again don't that's Hasbro. Team me don't team me it, it was a Hasbro big wheel with a kid with two guns and you're thinking <laughs> okay the gun's attached to the big wheel and there's like a trigger or something there was attachments to hold the big wheel and all the nerf darts but it didn't actually come with that gun so in other words you had to buy that and yeah, then and go the buy the right gun that went with it so you yeah. could attach it. All right, so Frank said, I heard from a true employee that the last day, June 30th, the liquidation will raise the percentage each hour. Then they're going to... Oh, wow. Then they're going to move aisle by aisle and make offers. So we're taking that day off. So if that is the case, June 30th, you will see us live. That's a bidding. Saturday. That's a Saturday. Oh, uh, all Saturday. right. Well, I mean, it's can't miss it. I mean... It, I don't know. I'm just, I, I think. They're going to pull the stuff that doesn't yeah. sell and put it in big lots yeah. and, you know. And then I, I think that they will probably also go around the night before and they'll just look at names of products and go, that's Star Wars. Yeah, you're not going to get DC anything Comics. for, you're not going to get anything too you know, cheap. Because anything with the certain name brand on it is going to go for more money. I just want to, I want to offer them like 10 bucks. Let me pop all the bottoms. Just, I just want to see what stashes are left in the store. And, and we had a couple of really good uh, finds this week. Some, yeah. Somebody found a Mezco um, Sam from Trick or Treat. Wow. I, and, saw, I saw one of my TRU as well. Yeah. And a, and a Batcave. Somebody came up with that. The 66 Batman Batcave that, that comes cool. with Adam West without the mask nice. on. Comes with alternate heads. I think it was the same guy. But, I mean, that's a great find. A Greedo somebody came up with. Yep. So... There's lots of stuff still out there. So Mike said eventually, Matt said, I'll have to stop by and see what I can find at my local one here. I haven't gotten out to mine since they started dropping prices. Curious to see what they have left. To be honest, Matt, you got to check because every yeah. day they're going to put more it's out. Be. And you also, just as a note, only because we've been doing this now every week. You can't just go to the old sections no. you used to yeah, go to. Whole, no. the whole it store. is the whole store and try to get back by the closest door to the stock room because that's where they're pulling the pallets out to get yeah. ready to get spread. So we yeah. were just going through and looking in the boxes yeah. you know, that were still filled from the pallets. I've, I've literally yeah. done laps and you find new stuff. Plus Let's you also find stuff that's discarded that somebody was like, eh, Yeah, well no, you gotta look by, look by where the scan machine is. Yeah. Cause people are grabbing stuff, scanning it, and then well, bumping it That's what out. happened with my TIE fighter. I walked down a particular aisle like three times. The third time I turned back around and it was just there on the floor. It just it was appeared. magic? Yeah, it just appeared there. Somebody yeah. just put it down. It, so it's, it's, a little, it's a little crazy. It's, it's, it's sad. It's not Toys R Us anymore. It's the Wild West, and really, you have to go because you don't know what you're going to find. It's like going to visit your grandmother that has <laughs> Alzheimer's now. 
What you know that? what I mean? All time. He can't all time. All time. All, all old oh, toy timers. All timers. All timers. All timers. Uh. Every week. But listen, you go, you know it's your grandmother. She's there, but she doesn't know who you are. No, no. She doesn't know any of the stories. It's that's it. We're got let's say bye bye, guys. Yeah. Toys R Us Toys is R dead. Us is, so yeah. uh, and it hurts. Like I mean we're having fun with it here, but it really yeah. I mean, Bill Rhodes says he'd buy three at forty bucks. Jason Hawk says fifty, he'd get one for his daughter. Rick says talked with my true today and the liquidators are selling other items they've attained through true locations that, that till they close so that is true so they are as, pulling as they're closing the locations whatever doesn't sell is getting moved to the bigger store the bigger store until there's no stores left and and that makes sense but it also creates a weird kind of where where was this well How that's yeah I mean, where was it, where was the stuff sitting i found some 2003 spider-man two things yeah that was i saw the sticker book yeah i should have told you again and i was like because that's toby that's is, my spider-man 14 years old you know and it's one it's weird when you find like a hero's action figure but yeah from you know something I mean? from spider-man two <laughs> not even three two jamie says that he'd pay uh at 40 bucks he'd buy five of them <laughs> Uh, Alfonso says at My Toys R Us, everyone who works there is a collector or a reseller. So it's and, hard to find the good stuff in the store, but I go on eBay and my t in my town and I'll find everything they're buying it before the customers can. Raul said he'd up. buy one for 50 Eddie said, had the tie, sold it, I want the one six. <laughs> Mike said, I'd pay 50 to 75 I'd probably try and ride it too. Good for you, Mike. I know I'd break it. Jason Hawk says, seems like everyone was find, finding the Black Series TIE Fighters. I went to two trues, neither had them, and I thought the warehouses. Who was that? Uh, Jason Hawk. Hawk. Jason, I did three, and I came up on the fourth one when I went to visit my parents, and that, that's where I found them. Frank Joseph said, check under those bottom shelves. Carl said, great stash of Star Wars and Transformers items in the baby section at his store. Matt said, awesome. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll keep looking. And our buddy Jason Nelson said, went to my local true over the weekend and they had no TIE Fighters, but they had close to 400 of the New York Comic Con Funko Destro Pop. Which clearly. Wow. 400. That's a lot. That's a pallet. <laughs> That's a and Jason, don't lie. You bought them all, didn't you? <laughs> you popped by an MF. -er. They were a penny a piece and you bought yeah. every single one. Every of them. single one. Uh, I almost said the shirt game is strong here, too. I, uh, I'm, just black, I'm just black shirting today. Just black shirt. Like, yeah. it's, it's straight black series. Well, it's black series. Yeah. Hmm. They don't sell those in my size, so no. I made my own. Yeah, you do. We made one I, for I, you. I, I, there, what you can't see here is, is the that o, there's a TIE fighter. The 09? Yeah, that's true. All right, so. Um, you know, I thought I had something else here for this time. Oh, and it, something I like to, I thought that I noticed throughout the, uh, the weekend with the TIE fighters is they weren't for sale. This was something that people actually wanted. Mm -hmm. So this wasn't like, oh, I got one. I'm selling it for fifty. It was like, oh, dude, we know you paid twelve fifty for it. You're like, yeah, but you'll still pay fifty for it. No, this was, I got this. I wanted this. Has anybody right. seen somebody in the parking lot hawking anything yet? You know what I mean? Like, because I, I, I know I've went before on like, you know, hey, we're selling the Wii U came out today, or you're there on release day, and then there's the guy in the parking lot. I was like, I was here first. I'll sell it to you yeah. for a premium. Imagine how bad would you feel if you saw a scalper in the parking lot? I mean, I know AFJ would. If, if collectively the community would crush that person. <laughs> well, we're not. I mean, I've seen the most I've ever seen is somebody walk away with three of them and get them into his minivan. And I don't think he was selling them. Wait till we have to try to put three of those land speeders in the, in the back of the black SUV. Uh, Tie one. It's Evan, gonna, Evan would be riding on the, I, the hook. I, I think that I'm light enough to actually drive it. Oh, I I'm think a, I may kill the battery, but I've driven one of those little Jeeps, and I now, can do is it. Now, it is it is it battery driven? I think it is. I think it's like a it's like I its own so. little car. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think there's any gasoline in it. No. We're saying this the new electric no. car. It's a new I, electric I, car. I, I thought it was like a pedal. Right, right? <laughs> it's not saying a pedal. it now. If we buy two of them, the two of you we'll race. race Race outside, whoever wins will, you know, oh, we'll, we'll sweep that's the gonna be That's going to be epic. Like, we'll race for, like, we'll pick, how about this? We'll pick two junkies with a prize each. Yeah, okay. And then we'll and race whoever, oh, no. whoever, whoever gets wins. to that, or that race. He may be taller and about 20 pounds more than me, so I think you want me. I don't know, because <laughs> if there's, we, you've got to see if there's downhill, he gets. And, and we got, we got to do, we'll do and a training get, montage for me. And get the legs in there, too. 
Oh, God, yeah. Yes, exactly. Well, oh. you might be able to put one leg into to pedal to the metal I'll use the other it one as leg a scooter. Out. Somebody, Eddie <laughs> said I have an adult conversion kit. It's battery. Nice. Uh, buddy of Frank said buddy of mine made a crazy looking table for the tie. That's what I think I would yeah. do with it. Yeah. If I'm, I was going to do it, I'd make times. a table. You could make a little bookshelf. You know, yeah. where on the bottom you put yeah. books, yeah. on the top you put That's books. That's what MJ's, MJ's first thought for me was just to do that. Because I have no room in my apartment for that giant tie fighter. Yeah, it's, like like I said, it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, I got two of them. And then you're like, yeah, what but where am I going to put them? What do with this? And then, then you have the box. Evan, I'm surprised. He just brought the tie fighter in yeah. instead of bringing the box yeah, in, when you When you find it, I, I, I put it together, and then I was like, I'm not taking it apart to put it back in the box. If you're a junkie... And you find this at twelve bucks. You're buying every one you could fit in your car. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. You're you're going to because you know somebody else is going to want it. And even if you get that twelve fifty from your friend or not, you're like, ah, yeah, you know, Let's have fun. So that's what uh, Mike was saying. He bought his. He's not selling his Tie Fighter. He bought it for himself. Yeah. And then Jason was saying another oddity I found. So we've been looking everywhere for the Master Chief from the Halo line. Tru is going out of business. And suddenly we find tons of them at both our TRUs. What is up yeah. with that? that, that they, T, Toys R Us, unfortunately, guys, had a terrible distribution model. They didn't get stuff where it needed to be. They clearly sat on stuff that people wanted. Because nobody knew, you know, there was a point when you'd go to Toys R Us and the people that worked there knew what was coming out. But in the last few years, I'd go no. to Toys R Us and, hey, you guys got the new Marvel Legends? And they're like... Well, we have Marvel stuff over right. here. You know what I mean? If you're going to work there, you should know. You could, I mean, and, you, you and talk honesty, about it. I, I applied. I lost, I lost my job working in a restaurant, and it was a holiday. So I figured, okay, I'll go work, uh, what was it, like third shift or something, and put stuff away at Toys R Us and make some extra money and know when the toys are there so that I can grab a few from time to time, plus get the discount. I have a college degree. I wrote a toy blog for five years and... I had been to Toy Fair for six years running. They would not hire me. And I think they said that it was, I, I, I'm assuming that I had too much education that I wasn't going to be just a yes man, but I could not get a job there. And the funny thing is, Jared Cruz, who started this company, also applied. College degree, right? Has his own toy website. Wouldn't hire him. Yeah. So if the few and far between people that I had actually interacted with at Toys R Us, when I would go in there, I'd say maybe two in the last 10 years knew exactly what I was talking about when I had an issue or a problem or I was looking for something. So they were just looking for people that were nine to fivers, gonna come in, punch the clock, count their money, and then walk away. They weren't going to be somebody who said, I know what the new uh, Mattel cars are, or I know what the new DC figures are. They didn't have those people. And if you don't have those people, customer service is gone, I'll just go to Amazon to get what I want. And sadly, that's... That's the Where future. So uh, while we're going to ramp here for a little bit more about Toys R Us, but uh, you know, tell us in the comments, did, what, what crazy things did you find over the liquidation the last couple months? You know, what did you see that was, that was really odd or you know, that other people wanted? So, let, I mean, let's, because let, we're all kind of talking trash about Toys R Us, and I know we all deep down love yeah, Toys it's, R Us. It's, it's... So let's, let's remember that... It's not so. I mean, it is Toys R Us's fault, but they got bought out. Yeah. The deck got put back on the company. Yep. For the last ten years, they've been paying back un, two, two to four hundred million a year in debt payments that they weren't supposed to be, mm. um, and they were making close to two hundred, two hundred and twenty million profit if they weren't paying that debt payments which means they could have reinvested in better distribution models, a on, better and website, online, and online, online, pay their people a lot more, not just the executives. I can't talk for the executives that got their bonuses. I think that's BS. I think the frontline guys got, got screwed here pretty hard. Um, but, that, I mean, that we're seeing the end of something that is not going to come back. Now, we did an interview with uh, Elliot Kassoff, who's the guy who wants to bring back KB Toys. Mr. KB. Mr. KB. Um, he's trying his best. We're going to see if we can get a follow-up. But you're never going to see 800 brick-and-mortar locations for a standalone retail item like toys 
again. No. Not, not, you know, you'll see them, maybe we'll get something new in the malls. You'll get your Think Geeks, your GameStops will continue to sell. Um, And Best Buy is actually becoming, they're getting the toy aisle back. I mean, their music and videos are shrinking. But I was there the other day, and the toy aisle is getting bigger and bigger you know each what? time. And my, it's tech toys, but there's action figures there, too. My wife said this to me, and I thought she had a good point. We were at, I think, Target or Walmart. And she said, why haven't they expanded these sections yet? Knowing that Toys R Us is going out of business, this is the time where if you're a Walmart or a, or a, a, a Target, where you can say, hey... We're going to spend some time. We're going to beef up our toys online. We're going to open up these sections a little bit more, carry some more variety because it's out there. And it just looks like everybody's just like, ah, eh, we'll wait till it's dead. And they're going to have to come to us no matter what. And that's a terrible model. Right. Well, yeah. I said something similar to my wife and I said, uh, I think it's time for, now I know we're East Coast based, but Boss Cobbs is a huge department store here on the East Coast. And... I was thinking, mostly in the Northeast area, but I was thinking, Boss Cobb's toy department is a joke. It's mostly baby stuff. But back in the day, my mom oh, yeah. was the toy department manager at, at, at a major store. And the toys they had, the section was enormous. And I said, this is the time for those kind of department stores to bring back, maybe not a full section. And they're but dying maybe anyway. focus on like, hey, we're going to carry Marvel Legends and we're going to carry Star Wars toys when they come out when the new movies and things arrive we're going to have a wall of each that somebody can come in here and say oh i can get these marvel figures here i can get these star wars figures here and then maybe that just goes away when the movie's done they only buy for so many months and then it's fine but it would be another presence where you could get people to come back in your store and re, you know yeah. maybe say wait a minute there's a market here the toy department is you know it's two walls but we're making more money let's let's get the foot traffic back in here again cuz toys r us is gone And I think Steph's right. I think, why should Target and Walmart even bother? Uh, The Target I worked at, they didn't even have a toy department manager. And I was trying to explain to my bosses on my exit interview, I'd left to work with these guys, um, on my exit interview was, you need a toy department manager as much as you need a grocery manager because toys expire. Toys run, have a shelf life. And if you don't have those things, you don't have somebody going, that World of Warcraft movie is so gone and out of the theaters. Why do we well, still you, have this story you, you in the end shelf? Up with, it needs to be marked you down. You end up and with get stuff on here. a shelf that nobody's going to buy. Right. And and and, and then it goes to Goodwill. In the, in the retail game, there's nothing there. So, uh, I mean, how so, many Black Series figures have I seen at a Goodwill? And why are they there? It's usually the wrong figure in the box, or the box is damaged beyond the point of a collector would actually mm-hmm. want it. And then Goodwill charges nine dollars for it, and you're like, you know what? Stormtrooper for nine bucks doesn't have his blaster. Yeah, well, I'll get it. So Sean said, uh, "Toys R Us." Exactly. He'll be shot. <laughs> Sean says, uh, "Toys R Us seem to avoid hiring collectors in general." I knew some that worked there, and they'd always pull the hot figures off the shelves for themselves and resale. And uh, you know what, Sean? I've been to some Toys R Uses, and the managers. I said something similar to the manager once at a Toys R Us in Delaware. We were at that one. Yeah. And I said, I said. She's like, she asked me, what are you looking for? And I noticed that her tags at the manager. I said, I'm looking for these Marvel Legends. And she said, oh yeah, we sold out of them. And I said, well, your employees probably got them and are, they're selling them on uh, eBay. Because I was, I was being snarky. And she said- You? Yes. Snarky? And she said, wow, we were... no, none of my employees are allowed to buy okay. the new figures when they arrive. They have to we're wait a few days one. before they can actually buy these figures because we want our guests to come in and be able to buy the figures. Mm-hmm. So if they stayed true to that, if they waited till she was out the door and then they paid for well, it. Well, you know, you always saw the chase pops behind the electronics counter. Yeah. yeah. You know well, what I mean? Target's very big on that. And you can lose your job in a matter of seconds if you do something of that yeah. nature. Like you can't even go on your lunch break and buy it. You have to be off the clock for your shifts. You have to come in before you work or you have to come out, af- come back after you're done. Or else you can get fired for buying a hot toy, not the brand, but a toy that's popular uh, right away. A Dan- warm toy. A, a warm, warm toy. toy. Uh, Daniel said uh, he hates that Toys R Us is not giving away the display signs. I agree. They're selling some stuff. Well, you, you, when you went to buy the sand speeder, the manager there said, I can't sell anything that doesn't say Toys R Us. Yeah, if it has another. Star Wars, Marvel, DC, video game stuff. They, I guess they're going to have to destroy it, which is a shame because somebody's going to get it. 
but it's usually not going to be the collector. It's that guy at the flea market that charges you like $600 yeah, right. for a display case. Jason said, I thought one guy gave up trying to save it. We'll get back to that. Yeah. Uh, t Daniel says he still took some. It looks like on the signs. Great point. The Walmarts in Connecticut and Rhode Island have a horrible toy section. Matt says, Bo Boscov's toys used to be awesome. I miss those days. Yeah, they were great. That and their electronics with video games and yep. such. Sean yep. says, my closest Walmart stopped stocking Black Series and Marvel Legends altogether. They haven't restocked in months. And Jason says, do you think that some of it is the toy company's fault? I mean, there seems to be something missing. When we were kids, aisles were full. You could walk into Kmart and find almost every figure from a line. G.I. Joe, for example. I Pegs were full, but the next wave it's, was almost, sorry, no. almost all the previous waves were gone. Now you can find peg warmers from several waves previous. Peg warmers uh, were not even a term when I was a kid. No. So what's the disconnect, the company, the consumers, or the toys? It's, I, go ahead. I think that, uh, and, and this is something I think I was talking to Evan with when we were looking at some uh, current Star Wars figures, is that you used to on the back, they had every figure laid out for that movie, usually for the first, like, two months of its release. Now we get four figures on the back, if you're lucky, because we have it in every language. There's no, there's no, like, here's every figure that's coming out for the wave, and this, no, here's every figure that's coming out for the movie. They release these in waves, and then if the wave doesn't sell, the first wave, all of a sudden we're going, well, yeah, why would I want four Jin Ursos and three different Cassian Andors when what I really want is I want the alien from the, you know, in the back scene. I want this bad guy. I want a stormtrooper. I want a mud trooper. We don't have the figures we actually want of based on the characters that we want. They're force feeding us who we want. Then we get frustrated. We get upset. And then we're kind of done collecting. And we stop going in. Then there's 60 boxes of the same wave at Toys R Us and we're wondering where are the other figures they didn't sell the 60 boxes they're not getting wave three four or five yeah I, I think it's a combination of a lot of things I mean you have kids today and listen as much as we'd love to say that the adult collectors are the market it's just not the case yeah. because though we'll buy you know one or two figures or we'll buy out a wave you know, the going and buying, I've got to, you know, all of these will be sold by Christmas because of the holiday. Kids aren't playing with as many toys as they used to because of TV, the internet, iPads, yeah. computers, and toy companies seem to be answering this call with not, you know, either trying to blend the two or, you know, but they haven't found a really easy way. Yeah. And the other thing too is price point and the amount that they're making. We talked about this earlier. The Right in the early 90s, the 70s and 80s toys started to have value. Mm -hmm. And I think in the 90s, they thought that, that, was, that any toy would become valuable. So they started overproducing. Right. And now they overproduce. You know, you used to get 80,000 of a mm -hmm. toy across the United States. Now it's a million of, of one Iron Man figure. Yeah. And, well, you know... That goes with something somebody had talked about the other day on, on the, I think it was on AFJ, was saying that, you know, Mattel said that the He-Man line died because they were saying everybody wanted He-Man and Skeletor, where they were producing guys like Whiplash, Web Store, Triclops, because too, everybody, bad. too bad. Everybody thought, well, they already have He-Man and Skeletor. Why would they want that? So they were creating a product that nobody wanted. And they said that was the end of the He-Man line. So that's why they kept creating a new He-Man figure every so many months and putting them out in the store. I don't think that's it. I, I think that, that, you know, I think that age group got away from, they, they outgrew it. And no matter how many figures you make, well, the property has kids a are going to grow out. It, yeah. it has a run. And it's, you know, the, you, you have to strike when the iron's hot. But the other big problem is price point now. Now, you used to be able to go, what, what were the, when you bought Star Wars Vintage, what were they? 299 up to even maybe $10. You could still get, no, but I'm saying Star oh, yeah. Wars started to creep up. Yeah. You could still get a decent figure. Now, you're paying a minimum of $20 for any yeah. decent figure. And I don't, I mean, a lot of people don't yeah. love the, some people like the 375. Well, that's. But that. now, you used to be able to go and search around and you'd be $100 in, but you got. 10 or 12 figures right now 100 bucks you're lucky if you get five let alone a vehicle and we are so connected to each other now that we have one guy open up a millennium falcon from the force awakens 
and put it together on video and you see it fall apart, you're like, well, I'm not going to spend 100, 100 yeah, bucks on it's, that. It's not I worth saw it. four of them this weekend and I'm like, you know what? What's this thing going for right now? Two and a half year old toy. Beep. $59.99. I know it's crap. Why was I going to buy it? Well, if it was 20 bucks, I'm like, yeah, it's a $20 toy. But, you know, we're, we're so connected. We know what's crap now. Yeah. You know, you send one out, it gets an honest review, and all of a sudden you're like, I don't want that. I heard the same thing about Poe Dameron's Black X-Wing, that it fell apart five minutes after they put it together. So you you're like, And you wouldn't buy the helmet because it was wonky. Well, the helmet's weird. We saw helmets on our, uh, on our toy hunt last Thursday. Yeah. They were still $75. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Adrian said South Texas never gets anything new, or when they do, they get limited, or they never restock well, it again. That's, part, that's another thing that you had said about price point. And I think one thing that we can attribute to that is she's all the way out in South Texas. What's it going to cost for T uh, Toys R Us to send a truck full of stuff out to the new store every so many months? Because what's the price of gas? And gas is a lot more. Remember, I remember when gas was 75 cents a gallon. That's why Toys R Us had the world by just revamping their online ordering system. Mm -hmm. By making each brick and mortar store a location that could ship to those connecting regions yep. for the least amount of shipping that would have been it that would have saved the company but you know right so, so when we're looking at all those things you add them up and then you're like well now that's well, why it's this are... fail this fail yeah. this fail this yeah. fail it, you know it adds up so uh figures aren't functional for kids they took the fun out of it 218 versus ten dollars jason said three bucks uh for the star wars toys Eddie said, if you make a 20, 20 assorted He-Man figures in one six scale, I'd buy all 20. So, uh, Eddie, Super 7. That's why these smaller collector companies, Mezco, NECA, um, Super 7, they're, they know that there's enough people out there right. that want these figures. You've got to get them because they're limited now. So yeah. now there is a real price demand because they're not a Hasbro. No. So they've got to make them, it costs them more money, but if you want what you want, you're gonna get it from a company like that. So, you know, make sure to check all the big, and, uh, you know. And I think one thing we have, to, we have to fully embrace as a collecting community is going in and buying these kind of figures from our comic book stores. Yes, they're gonna be slightly more than they would be if you got it at, at Target or Walmart. But if you can go to a comic book store and maybe you pay $5 over, but you're giving the comic book store an extra bit of money, they're gonna stick around and maybe they'll order NECA figures and some Mezcos. Make and a relationship. They'll, yeah, because you get discounts all I, the time. I, I have a guy that I buy all my, I know, sorry. I got my, a guy. I got a guy. I got a guy. I, I buy my no. DC figures well, from him I and I guy. pay 20 bucks for the new DC uh, multiverse he gets me yeah. at, at literally at retail and he used to get me the icons and he'll get me the essentials and I'll pay what the sticker is and you, you go back and they know like if you're a collector go to your local guys talk to them they have accounts if you're gonna buy from them and you don't wanna like I love hunting but I'm not gonna go around looking for the multiverse figures like a madman only the ones that I know I need to get so I just go to him, he orders them, it saves me a lot of time. And I get everybody can't do that, but you know, if you need to, it's an opportunity. Um, Ed says, my five-year-old loves action figures, but I refuse to pay $9, $20 for a figure that falls apart in a couple weeks of him playing with it. Mm -hmm. Jason says, as a parent, I don't see a soccer mom paying $20 for just two figures. Samuel says, I never seen uh, Poe's X-Wing toy, only the Lego version, which he wants. Eddie says Mondo is making one six He Man figures. Yeah, they are. That those oh, look wow. great. Nice. And Jason Hawk says it also seems companies like Hasbro aren't sure if they're selling to adult collectors or kids. They try to appeal to both kids and adults, but you get cool figures that come with missile firing gimmicks for kids that just mm -hmm. raise the price without adding value. Yeah. And Samuel says my local shop gives me deals all the time just because I built a rapport with them. And that's I mean, that's what you gotta do. Go in, talk to the guys. And you're right. It's the it's big. Before it was like ah, kid kids like toys. Make them they can knock them around and yeah. that'll do it. But now it's it's all about revenue. It's all numbers and cents. You and we talked about this too the other day. You have shows like uh, not Teen Titans, Young Justice. Yeah. That gets canceled in their third season, which now third season come to Netflix because girls 
like the show, and they couldn't see girls buying action figures. Mm. So when your demographics are leading your decisions across the board, it's not always going to work out. And Hasbro, we talk about this all the time, why haven't they figured out? I'll buy it from Hasbro Toy Shop. You have an online presence. Why not give yourself your own exclusives? Or really try to push that? Or no, hey, why don't we make this figure in a lower price point for the kids and give the adults what they're looking for as well? They've got the money and they've got the time, but they, they, want, it, they want to just do it one they, time. They've been kind of doing that with the Avengers figures. And we've seen lower price point figures that are more kid friendly in relation to the Marvel Legends, which, you know, we built, we built Thanos here, like, what, almost two months ago now? And we're still waiting for Cole Obsidian to build his figure, and we don't even have those yet. And now we're getting another Thanos in the 50th, yeah, whatever they call it. So I, another thing that I, I wish that Hasbro would do this, and I can, I'm sure maybe somebody's done the math on it as to why they don't, but if I'm a collector, I should be able to go to Hasbro.com and just say, wave one, wave two, wave three, pre, prepay for all of them. Every figure's listed, no duplicates, no triples, no six Jin Ursos and one Stormtrooper. Flip that, and it's just, I'm done. I ordered all my figures right from the source. Hasbro gets my money, they ship me my figures, done. Make a collector's club, do whatever it takes. But if the toy store is going to be gone, Hasbro is not going to stick around much longer because if you look at the, the toy aisles, they're starting to become more like remote control cars and mm -hmm. board games. Board games are coming back. Well, so Sean, Sean said in that, more. that the Deadpool, Spider-Man, and IW, maybe I'm missing that one. IDW? No. No, the IW waves killed my love of the hunt. Distribution was a joke, and I wasted oh, so yeah. much on gas. Yeah. The, so I'm, the, the I'm pre-ordering waves from now on when I can afford yeah, it. Yeah, the Deadpool Sasquatch Build-A-Figure wave was a joke. Joke. Like, we, we barely found it. Now, we just lost somebody. Now, we're looking everywhere. Uh, everywhere, I'm sorry. Everywhere we go, we find him. Yeah. The lizard. Couldn't find it. January, that was the hot thing. Build the lizard, build the lizard. I still haven't seen, other than Gwenpool, I haven't, or, yeah, Gwenpool. Yeah, Gwenpool. I haven't we, seen. We've gotten close, but I wanted Mysterio because I think the character is crazy. It's a, it's a neat character. And he, you love Jake Gyllenhaal. No, he took down he took down the X Men and Wolverine for God's sakes. I mean, you know, if you look at that alternate reality, but that's the figure I wanted, and I figured, oh, no problem getting Mysterio. He's a peg warmer. Nope, he is definitely gone. And now we have two different variant heads, and everybody wants sixty, seventy dollars a piece for him. Why Hasbro? Why'd you do that? We just lost MJ. So well, while well, well, he's over there, there was, a, there was a comment a while ago. It's that, really warm in here, folks. Yeah. Uh, the comment, there was a comment a while ago asking about our opinion of Star Wars Battlefront. He didn't say one or two. Okay. But that was based off of the TIE Fighter question. Oh, all right. I enjoyed both games. I finished the campaign for uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. I don't know if you did or not. I played the campaign, and then I would get frustrated. And I think... Really? It's weird, because I think... That's what I really wanted, and that's what I thought the first yeah. game lacked. But Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't know. I think my attention span has like gone and I played Battlefronts 1 and 2 the original games Ooh, for yeah. the Xbox to the you know Dude, I mean Battlefront 2 all my guns all my guns were like leveled up to the point where it was a joke if somebody came in with a new character <laughs> but you know I keep trying to find the time for myself to sit down and just play games but I don't know I mean it's great when you're a kid and you don't have to worry about everything but as an adult you sit there and going is this really the best use of my time? Well, that's what I, I sat down when I originally came out because I wanted to write something about it. And then I, I missed the window by yeah. a while. Yeah. But the, the campaign was a lot of fun. I thought it was worthwhile. If you can, you can get it from like a red box for a couple days yeah. just to beat the campaign, if you know yeah. you have time set aside to play it, I, I would do it. I think part the campaign's of it, a lot of fun. And it, it, I, it fits really well in the Star Wars canon. Yeah. It's a very interesting... It adds aspects to the to I, the canon. That's I think part cool. of the appeal for me was lost when PlayStation went to the uh, the pay-in for the subscription for the year. Um, yeah. Because I can hop on my three and go play Call of Duty with my buddies for nothing. Yeah. Where on you know I've got a they've all got to get the subscription for the year. They're all busy and now it's kind of like it's just not like hey you know what are you guys doing you know what are you doing Tuesday night? Oh, nothing. And I was like oh let's play Call of Duty. Boom, we're there. If yeah. we want to play Battlefront. You we all have that battlefront. We all have to have, you know, mm -hmm. the subscription. We have all that other stuff, 
and the old game still is just as much fun. Yeah. You know, and you know we're pretty much doing it just to hang out and laugh. So. I, just, I want a Galactic Conquest. Got player. any more uh, comments here? Uh, yeah. Uh, Sammy Levins was saying, always support your local local business. I always go to my local comic book store whenever I go to pick something up. Um, not only do you get a connection for your collection, but you can meet some great people and make some great friends, which is priceless. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean said uh, Infinity War, which I don't know if the movie's talking about the, that wave. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a tough wave to get. Wave 2 is really tough. Yeah, we're really... We've been hitting everywhere. We've got two out. guys for Wave 2, and uh, I think MJ's just a little tired of ordering it. And even then, I looked to order it today, and it was on back order. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I see... Samuel says, I see more electronic toys than, I, than figures around me. And then Dean says, uh, same with Funko. Funko Pops. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah Funko. Not to take anything away from the pop, but I think it's it's an eclectic group of people who buy them, and it's usually you have an attachment to the property of the Funko Pop. Like Evan didn't have a Funko Pop until I bought him um, Cord from Just over there. from Thor. Uh, Ragnarok and that's his first one and that's the one we really like and it's just fun and I think that's the appeal of pop is that you can find something for someone you know and get a fun gift for them and it's not going to be a you know major ordeal um, and it's a fun little thing so we think we have a 375 of this guy somewhere yeah, in we the need office to, we need to find that and we need to find him we think he's in here somewhere and we're trying to locate him um, I guess we could just we could know, wrap up from we here we could wrap up I don't know what else we have really to say unless you guys have some more questions. So, hi, hi, Daniel. Yeah, so if you have any more questions, um, if you just joining us, we did get a Black Series uh, TIE Fighter. Evan oh, got one for 1250 um, That was the price he paid. Uh, he did not remove a sticker. Um, I found two myself. So they're out there. I saw four with the stickers on. So that's another issue that, you know. And our major issue was more than one of these, do you really need it? Yeah, and, it's so big. And as toy collectors, we always want, you know, two or three vehicles to build something to make a really cool display. But at the same time, you are talking about one gigantic toy. I have a pin of this, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. I That's got it cool. from uh, when I went to see Star Wars Rebels for the first time up in New York, at New York Comic Con. They gave these pins away. That's really cool. So, yeah, it's, 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 a cool, it's a cool little thing to have put on your jacket lapel. But that is one monster toy and... You know, I got I got two. I got one for a friend, and I I, I don't know what I'm going to do with the other one because I already have one. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna end up giving it away. So, yes, he's flying that around. So, I guess we could wrap this up. Uh, MJ, sorry. You have anything else to say? Um, let me see. I'm sad that Toys R Us is closing. Uh. I, Jason referenced it. There was still somebody trying to buy it. That's dead. And, it, and it's going out the way it is. It's, it's just like, it's a place you know you can buy toys and let's just throw more toys in there. Yeah. It's pretty sad. Um, other than that, I mean, we have a lot of great stuff coming on. We got some reviews this week. We got uh, Entertainment Earth sent us some Walking Dead figures. Yes, they're here. We're going to be reviewing these this week. Um, we just put up our first list of San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. Yeah, which and it's a list we're going to keep adding to. So as we get closer and closer to Nerdvana in San Diego, we're going to be adding to that list. So the new stuff will be on top, and we'll just put the old stuff at the bottom. So you could go in there and go, I really want the, the uh, Factory Entertainment uh, Batman statue. What booth is that at? And then, boom, you can just go right to it. So it, you're going to see it a lot between now and then. It could almost be on a daily thing. It'll get posted on uh, and, FJ. And also, make, like we always talk about make a friend before you make a purchase. Yes. With San Diego Comic-Con exclusives, make sure you get references for whoever says that they're going to be there and going to pick the thing up for, for you, you and all that. It is a nightmare to grab these exclusives. People do it. Yeah. If they try to say that they're going to do it for you for no money... God bless you, right. but make sure that you have references or you know the person, okay? Right, and another thing that uh, uh, Jarrett used to deal with this, and I've dealt with it a few times, is that if, if you're gonna give money to someone, make sure this is actually someone you trust, you know, make the friend, but make sure that you know that if that $40 doesn't go towards the toy that you wanted, the exclusive, that that $40 is gonna come back to you. Or that you, know, you hold it ransom and say, 
uh, when the $40 ends up in my PayPal, then you're gonna get your toy. Because that first week after Comic-Con, if you don't have people that are following through on paying you for picking up whatever you got that you waited two hours for, it's still gonna be valuable. Oh yeah. So, and I don't know what our rules are going to be on that. We may have to think about that. Yeah, we're gonna. We'll, yeah, that's a good. That's yeah. a good point. So we'll we'll get on that. Other than that, uh, we got GamerCon in July. Yes. Okay. We'll we'll throw up a link uh, on the website. We have an interview coming up yep. with the uh, the person who founded GamerCon. Yeah. Uh, we'll be there. Two tables. Yep. Going to do some raffles and giveaways. Yep. Te- you know, teach people about mm-hmm. what we do here, about the toy community. And we're hoping to go to Keystone Con, which is yeah. going to be in Philadelphia, which is put on by Reed Pop. Uh, they allowed us to go to New York Comic Con for the first time in three years that we got a press pass for. Yep. So now we're going to be going back. Well, hopefully we're going to go to their Philadelphia event. So we'll be at Keystone Con, which is supposed to be as, as you know, on the same level, I doubt, as in size that and New York Comic Con We will did be. Wizard World and watch our video on YouTube, and yep. now we kind of yep. feel about it. Um, but we're hoping to do that, and then we have GamerCon, and then maybe too many games. We may be going to that as well. Yeah. So, and that's in June, and that's in uh, outside of Philly. So, too many games. Everybody keeps talking about this. Yeah. And I was shocked spring. how many people that I was friends with on Facebook were already planning on going. So, could be a fun con, especially if you like games, and why not? Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks for checking in on our little Talk Toys R Us. Yeah. It might be one of our last. Talk well, Toys R Us. Yeah, well, as, as we were about to cross over into June, and then That's I don't it. know, you know, like we've got the tie, we had a Tie Fighter weekend, and God knows what which, next week's going to bring. Which yeah. for Sean, uh, I found in Denver, New Jersey, uh, but, and Sean was saying my store didn't have any. My body was so ready for the Tie Fighter. Just keep checking his body. I want ready. that Force. The was it the Force Awakens Millennium Falcon? You I don't. Want that to, you no, don't. it's crap. I don't. Wow. It's crap. It's crap. Can I, if I get it for 12 bucks, it's not crap. You can get it for 12 bucks. I bet I won't be taking the sticker off. Right. Uh, All right, guys. Junkies, we'll catch you later. I'm sure we're going to do another live this week. We'll yes, just we'll let keep, you know. Keep checking out. We'll announce it. Bye. See you later. <laughs>